Uh, I actually got into politics through uh, music, so I was involved in a lot of um, um, like a lot of hardcore and punk rock music community in the mid '90s, and that was a time when politics, particularly animal rights, was very uh, per, uh, pervasive throughout the movement and that music scene. Um, so I did a lot of reading, I did a lot of listening, um, watching videos, and just kind of over time decided that was something that I wanted to become involved in. And um, I just found a local group, you know, where I was living at the time, um, that was doing demonstrations, and I just reached out to them and, and became involved. It was, it, it was, it felt like a big thing at the time, but just taking that first step of just giving it a shot um, and doing it made me realize how easy it was to to actually pick up a sign or hand out a leaflet um, and it made me feel better about myself and made me feel better about what I was doing to change the world around me. I think Shaq, uh, the Shaq campaign and the campaign to close Huntington Life Sciences was so wildly successful because it was um, it was a movement that was non-hierarchical, so there, was, uh, there wasn't a lot of leadership. Um, there wasn't anyone telling others what to do. Um, it was um, grassroots people from around the world um, that were working together on something uh, because they cared about it, not necessarily because they were getting a paycheck or because they were trying to boost their career, but they did it because they were passionate about it. Um, I think it was also successful because um, people recognize the idea of utilizing every tool in the toolbox, meaning that um, if you are comfortable writing letters, then you could do letter writing campaigns. If you are comfortable doing protests, you could engage in protests. If you wanted to do civil disobedience, there was opportunities for that as well. So it was all these different levels of activism all working together against one particular place to shut it down. And the results were really amazing. So we had, you know, over a hundred of the world's largest corporations pull their support of this animal testing laboratory, whether that was um, giving them banking facilities or ensuring their work or um, investing in them as a company. All of these people, all these companies started to um, pull away from the laboratory because of the pressure put on them by grassroots animal rights activists. I think people who want to engage in, in some sort of protest activity, I think the thing to do is to be smart and be creative, to do the research into what you want to achieve and pick goals that are actually achievable. I think as an animal rights movement we often say like, well our goal is animal liberation or our goal is a vegan world. But if we're going to be honest and, and about those things, it's, it's a nearly impossible task. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we need to figure out something um, that's tangible that we can achieve um, you know, with the resources that we have, whether we're a small little organization or we're a multinational um, uh, organization um, or movement, and um, you know, set out on a path towards achieving those goals in a way that um, is uh, embracing of a lot of different people and a lot of different communities and figuring out ways that we can all tap in together to, to work together. <laughs> That's a big question. Uh, I, think, I think it depends on where you are in the world and, and who you're surrounding yourself with. For in the United States, I think we live in a, in a world that's dominated by corporate greed and uh, uh, apathy. And um, and I think it's a I think it's a big push to ask people to be uh, um, um, to have empathy about uh, things other than themselves. Um, but I see I see things changing ever so slightly. I think as a movement we have to work a lot harder and in a lot different ways in order to achieve the goals that we want. Because I I think the way we're doing things now is not going to make uh, systemic change. It's making Little, little bits here and there, but it's not making systemic change, um, which ultimately is what we need to um, bring about the, the objectives that we all want. First of all, we have to recognize our limitations, so um, I think we have to determine what we are capable of doing and um, realizing that there are a lot of different organizations and a lot of different people all working towards the same goal but in different ways. Um, so I think it's trying to figure out 
who you personally and your organization can reach, whether that's like major movers and shakers in corporations or if it's the general public, whatever you're best at, and then just start moving those people ever so slightly towards um, you know, your desired goal. I mean, as animal rights activists and vegans, our goal is you know, um, to a life free of exploitation for all animals, both human and otherwise. Um, so I think just shifting people towards that consciousness and shifting people towards activism and a more compassionate lifestyle is something that we should all work on. Um, and how we do that looks different for everyone. I think, I think in general, the animal rights movement needs to be recognized more as a social justice movement. Right now I think it's recognized and seen as a fringe movement. Um, and I think in order to be uh, recognized more as a social justice movement, particularly from other social justice movements, um, we need to do away with purity politics and pointing fingers at people that aren't vegan enough or aren't animal rights enough. Um, I think, at least in the United States, we have a, a tendency to um, say, you know, hey, you're not this, you're not that, when really we should be saying, hey, like, we're, we're all fighting for the same thing. Like, you know, you're fighting for the environment, you're fighting for human rights and civil rights, we're fighting for animal rights, but at the end of the day, it's the same thing. It's collective liberation. So, um, but we as an animal rights movement have the tendency to say, well, it's animal rights or nothing. It's veganism or it's nothing. Um, if you're not who we are, then you're not good enough. And that way, we always will marginalize ourselves into these little niches, um, and we'll never be able to get out of it. And we've seen this for the past 20, 30, 40 years, where we're just, you know, we're not part of a bigger social justice movement because of that. But I think if we opened our, our um, minds and our movements to others, um, and let people in in certain places where it where it's makes sense, then I think we start becoming bigger, we start forming more um, coalitions, um, and we get bigger numbers, and we get bigger successes. And that's ultimately what we need. Absolutely, I think there's there's so many political prisoners around the world. There's people in prison for animal rights issues, um, environmental issues, human rights issues. Um, they've all fought for their causes and their movement, and um, now they are in prison for it. So um, there's a lot of things you can do. You can do fundraisers to raise money for them for their legal defense, or for um, so that they can purchase like vegan food or envelopes in in prison. Um, but the easiest thing to do is to write them a letter. Um, there's local groups both in both in Basel and Zurich that do letter writing to political prisoners um, once a month um, and that's a really great thing that you can do. It's easy uh, to write a letter and just put a smile on an inmate's face and let them know that they're not forgotten about. In the United States there's a group called the Anarchist Black Cross ABC and they do what's called an illustrated guide to political prisoners and they put it on their webpage every month. It's updated um, with all the political prisoners from all the different movements uh, within the United States. Um, but for Europe, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think the Animal Liberation Front Supporters Group out of England, I think, has um, a list of political prisoners throughout Europe. There's a case uh, coming, coming up soon uh, it's there by the names of Sven and Natasha, and they're trying to be extradited to England to face charges for um, HLS-related stuff. Um, I'm not, I think the webpage is either support Sven and Natasha or free Sven and Natasha. You can look it up, but um, there are people that are facing prison time for animal rights and they definitely need all of our support. Yeah, I think veganism is a great step towards a more compassionate world, but ultimately, like, this, statistically, it's not doing what we're hoping it's going to do, um, which is, you know, make the world the greatest place ever. So, um, you know, what I, ultimately what we need to do is take that step out of our comfort zones, um, past just being vegan, and then become an activist. And an activist looks like a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be, you know, doing radical stuff. It doesn't necessarily even have to be doing protesting. You can do letter writing, you can do emails, you can do petitions, you can set up stalls in your, in your cities and pass out information, or you can raise money for local groups to organize. Um, there's so many different things that we can be doing beyond just making a political choice every time we eat a meal. Um, and those are the things that I think ultimately will start to um, push about, bring about systemic change. Thank you very much. Yeah. Very nice to see you.